It's This Week in Bourbon. It's the bit of spice you need for bourbon news. And here's your headlines for February 18th, 2022. There's two new pieces of legislature that have been introduced to save barrel picks. The Louisville Slug Museum is now getting into bourbon tourism, and Portland's East Side Distilling will release its first ever maraschino cherry whiskey. But first, here's a quick word from our partners. From their bar to yours, Chad and Sarah of the popular YouTube channel It's Bourbon Night bring you their favorite at-home old-fashioned mix with the new Elemental Elixir's Golden Hour Syrup. It's a custom-made syrup with notes of bold black tea, warm spices, and orange zest. All you need is your favorite whiskey and ice. No bitters needed. One bottle makes 16 drinks, so that's only $1 cocktail before you add your own whiskey. They can also be enjoyed in other cocktails or spirits, mocktails, coffee, tea, and anything you can think of. It's crafted locally in Lexington, Kentucky, and you can get your bottle now at whiskeyambitions.com. Ed Bly and Rising Tide Spirits are back again with a new release of Old Stubborn Bourbon. And this release of Old Stubborn is a premium hand marriage of 10, 11, and 12-year cask drink, barely filtered pot still bourbon. It comes in at a staggering 123.8 proof. And the flavoring grain for this one, which the last one was weeded, but this time it's now rye. Rich, sweet, and bold with a long finish that's sure to be another eye-opener. You can order online at Sealbox or TheBourbonConcierge.com, and you can even purchase in person at Revival Vintage Spirits, and even now with very few select stores in Kentucky. You can get it now while you can, but be sure to do it because it's not going to last long. Do you ever pour yourself a bourbon, swirl it around, and then start struggling to come up with tasting notes? And perhaps you're also looking for a good Father's Day gift idea. Well, you can now solve both with a kit from Nose Your Bourbon. And unlike other nosing kits on the market, Nose Your Bourbon kits feature real ingredients for the most authentic aromas. You can smell real Tahitian vanilla bean instead of some synthetic aroma that's just made from chemicals. So head on over to noseyourbourbon.com and enter code BP10 for 10% off your order. Always find what you love at Total Wine & More. With so many great bottles to choose from at the lowest price, it's easy to find your favorite Cabernet or a new single-barrel bourbon to try with some help from one of their friendly guides. And with every bottle comes the confidence of knowing you just found something amazing. With the lowest prices for over 30 years, find what you love and love what you find only at Total Wine & More. Curbside pickup and delivery available in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Spirits not sold in Virginia and North Carolina. Drink responsibly and be 21. Welcome back, everybody. We're here with another episode of This Week in Bourbon, where we cover what's happening in bourbon news. But, you know, for at least it's for us. This Week in Bourbon. bourbon. We, we need, need a jingle or We something. do need a jingle. <laughs> we'll get on that. There's somebody on Fiverr that can probably create us a jingle. Oh, yeah. Totally. Or maybe me and you. Or I can just sing that like you that get, terribly. You do that. I'll get some cymbals, and we'll just see, like, what comes. <laughs> <laughs> Drum set. <laughs> Got no snare in my headphones, that sort of thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. But it's been a pretty good week so far. We've selected a barrel from Jefferson's earlier this week. Two barrels. Yeah, two barrels. We got, a, I think, maybe one of the first ever twin oak single barrels that ever been done. We did a, a rum finished barrel. All were delicious, so I can't really wait to yeah. let those come out to everybody. Shout out to Trey and the team over there at Jefferson's for letting us come hang out and pick some cool barrels. It was fun. Hosting us. I mean, that's the first time I've ever been in their warehouse and kind Me of seeing what Gosh, they had going they got on. A ton of cool stuff, ton of inventory. I mean, I knew they had a lot, but when you see it in the flesh, you're like, dang, you forget how long Trey's been doing this. Like, he's so he's got some great barrels to work with. Yeah, especially when he said, he was like, oh, yeah, the first time we did this, it was. It was already a nine-year-old bourbon, and then we rested another piece of oak for the next five years. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> you're, just, you're just like thinking, like, we're already thinking four years out. He's he's already been in it for, you know, 15, 20, 25 years. And it's just, yeah, it's just when you think about something like that, my gosh, I hope we get to the point where we just forget about the barrels that we have. And they're just like, yeah, it's just, they're back there. We'll, we'll get to them when we get to them. I think that's what you have to do is just forget about them. <laughs> Otherwise, you're like, sell them now. <laughs> Gotta get money in. Yeah, I know, I know. Let's talk a little about a bourbon news here. And so the first thing we're going to talk about is the Icons of American Whiskey Awards. They were recently announced. And 
This is actually put on by American Whiskey Magazine, and, and we see them come out every single year. Here's the thing is, I don't really know how the judging happens, how you get nominated or anything like that, but let's go ahead and let's talk about them and, and see what we have in here. So this year, the most coveted awards of the Icon Awards, the Distiller of the Year, was awarded to Buffalo Trace, while the Craft Distiller of the Year, which has proven to be more competitive than ever, was awarded to Distillery 291. This virtual event also announced the Best American Winners for the World's Whiskey Awards while also unveiling inductee number 76 into the Whiskey Magazine Hall of Fame, which was Garvin Brown. So the Sustainable Distillery, Brand Innovator, and Campaign Innovator winner was Westland Distillery. The Visitor Attraction winner is Heaven Hill. The Master Blender and Master Distiller winner is Victoria Eadley Butler of Uncle Nearest. The Visitor Attraction Manager winner is Jeff Crow of Heaven Hill. And the American Whiskey Brand Ambassador is Philip Raleigh of Distillery 291. But the best bar goes to Bourbon's Bistro. Oh, man. That's a great list. All of those are well-deserving uh, candidates. So congratulations to all of them. Yes. Some, some no pun intended, icons of the whiskey industry. Uh, yeah. I guess that's how that's how you get the name. That's how you get the name. Yeah, I guess yeah. I need to need to do a little more research about how you get into the running to be a, an icon. Of I know. American do you have to be whiskey. nominated or do you just submit your name? Or, I don't know. Or do they pick themselves? That would be interesting to know. It's a good question. It's or is it like question. the other words, you got to pay $500 to, to enter? If I had to guess, it might be the latter. If, <laughs> I might need to, after, after we start talking, I might... One of us needs to go and research their website real quick and see if you have to pay to play or if this is something that they really just find the best of the best and give you an award. But if those were the best of the best, I would, I'd totally agree with all those. So those are all good choices. Yes. Um, we're a big fan of Jeff Crow over at Heaven Hill and everything oh, yeah. that they're doing at the new the Visitor Center over there too. So congratulations to all their winners. Really cool. Didn't mean to try to take anything away from it, but I just want to say congratulations to everybody that's over there as well. Yeah. So this was, you know, we talk about acquisitions all the time, and this is the newest one that happened, and that's Apex Funds has announced that they've reached an agreement to acquire a controlling stake in Tennessee-based Old Smoky Distillery from Centerview Capital. So Old Smoky was established in 2010 and is known for its popular distillery destinations. And in 2021, the company welcomed around 5.7 million visitors across its four distillery destinations in Tennessee. Centerview Capital invested in the distillery in 2013, and since that investment, the company has quadrupled in size. And as a part of the agreement, Old Smoky founders Joe Baker and Corey Connington and the current management will remain significant shareholders in the company per the release. The financial terms were not disclosed, but the transaction is expected to close by April, subject to customary closing conditions. Congrats to Old Smoky. I've been seeing those signs. It's like... uh, I pass Gatlinburg and go to Asheville, you know, and all that. And I see Old Smoky, and I know it's really popular. It's in based in Gatlinburg, I think. They've um, got a, they've got a few of them. I know I see them on the shelves here in Louisville too. You go by and you see the Old Smoky moonshine and a lot of the shelves around here too. Yeah, but they, uh, yeah, everybody loves, you know, they love those flavored moonshines. You know, it's like they can't get enough of them. So congratulations to them. Hopefully, it gives them the resources they need to keep growing and whatnot. So. We all need more moonshine. That's right. Flavored moonshine. Flavored moonshine. Let's Apple pie it. moonshine. Can't, can't get enough of that. What do you think? Pursuit moonshine? Could that be in our future because we don't have to wait five to six years for our bourbon to come of age? We'll do a toasted moonshine apple pie. <laughs> 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 yeah, we didn't age it. We just toasted it. It's got to sell, right? Everybody loves toasted. Yeah, they love moonshine and toasted. So let's do it. <laughs> I love let's Get it. all the buzzwords. Uh, I love when you can think quick, let it on your feet like that. That's that's a good one here. Yeah. So this one talks about sort of the, the the changing demographic of what we're seeing in drinking. And so with youth drinking in decline, there's a paper in the upcoming April edition of the International Journal of Drug Policy that suggests that alcohol may foul, sorry, may fall down with the policy agenda, which could mean fewer and not as many more new control policies coming into effect. A drop in alcohol consumption among young people may see policymakers start shifting their focus from drinking to other problems such as high-fat foods. Currently available online and soon to be featured in the journal is a piece of implications of falling levels of youth drinking for public health 
uh, policy, which says that most likely outcome of this trend is a withdrawal scenario where policymakers would have fewer incentives to address alcohol-related harm. Furthermore, the paper lists a set of additional and concurrent developments that would make it unlikely that there would be any rapid resurgence in youth drinking. It is noted, however, that there is a significant debate as to whether the decline in youth drinking will lead to a decline in adult drinking. The paper recording, and also the paper says that some researchers suggest that young people may be delaying their initiation of alcohol consumption rather than rejecting it entirely. So, yeah, they haven't. I think we've, you know, Blake and people have said, yeah, they haven't had kids yet or jobs or stress. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, part, of yeah, the, part of the territory. Yeah. But a lot of that two generations, I mean, they have another kind of, you know, epidemic is, uh, vaping you know and not epidemic but just that's their vice is uh you know e-cigs and vaping i know is a huge problem in that age range and then you know too how do you manage like cannabis and stuff uh you know from a controlled substance standpoint because it seems like that generation is but i I am glad to see they're kind of dropping or not that they are but they might be that looking at high fat foods or sugar because i've always thought Sugar is probably the biggest killer of everyone in this country, but we don't really like see it as a drug or a controlled substance, but it causes a lot of harm. And I know that's not a topic for a bourbon podcast, but uh, yeah, I'm no, glad I to mean, see that mentioned though in the article. You may, you may, you may be right. I mean, I remember, I forget who said it there. They said, you know, when your grandparents used to go to the grocery store, there was no organic aisle. Everything right. was just organic. Like that's just they the were way all, it was. And they were skinny and you know just doing <laughs> fine. <laughs> But yeah, everything I is organic. No, I mean, but you're right. I mean, if we think about it as well as you think about from an, an accessibility point of view, I remember going back to high school, it was a lot easier for me to get my hands on marijuana than it ever was to get alcohol. And oh, I'm sure totally. it, it might be in the same exact realm for what they're doing. And so it's one of those things, if it's out of your reach, then okay. But we're also seeing a different shift in the way that marijuana reform is coming around a lot faster than you see alcohol reform and it's not getting into i don't want to say it needs to drop an age or anything like that i'm just saying it's not being introduced young enough or it's not being available to the point where you're 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 shuttering people out you're making them you know stay away from it or something like that too and that also reminds me there's i didn't actually put it in here but there was another article that came out from vine pair this past week that talked about the drinking age in countries around the world And it was, I think, close to like 66% of all countries around the world have a drinking age, a minimum of 18, where Mm -hmm. the U.S. is one of the few that have it so high. And there are actually, I think, four or five countries where there is no minimum, there is no minimum drinking age. Like you could do it whenever. Uh, I think there was a few as well that were around like 15. So it kind of just goes to show that this might have some sort of adverse effect onto it too. Yeah, I mean, it's... uh you know, typical humans, they like whatever they can't have. So it's like whatever (laughs) allocated bourbon. Is that what you're trying to say? Exactly. It it doesn't matter what the the, the denominator is. That's a underlying human condition. So yeah, I I don't know the answer. I'm not smart enough to to know what's right, but uh, I mean, it is concerning, you know, if you have a whole generation like that moving, you know, if you're in the spirits business and you're like, well, but I, I have a feeling that you know, once they hit, uh, you know, their mid thirties and whatnot, they'll fall in suit, uh, like all of, all the rest of us drunks, not drunk, you, need, but you know what I mean? You need whiskey to cope. That's what it That's comes right. down to. <laughs> Life's hard. Life's hard. So you gotta, gotta get yourself a bottle United. You'll feel better. I promise. That's right. That should not be our tagline. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> that is definitely not our tagline. <laughs> well, we got to go back to the marketing team on that one. Yeah. All right, so here is one of the big headlines, and that is that there are two new pieces of legislature that have been introduced, and they've been covered by Fred Minnick this past week. The first is a proposed act that is deemed a quote-unquote emergency and is trying to save private barrel selections. So it was introduced back on February 10th, and it was sponsored by Kentucky State Senator John Schnickel. So Senate Bill 160 authorizes distillers to sample whiskey straight from the barrel. Whiskey Cast had actually done a nice rundown of this back in January as well, but essentially the Kentucky ABC wants to update the state's code for private barrel selections and are actively working with the industry to revise the regulation. Currently, one of the problems is a quote, a distillery shall not provide more than one and three fourth ounces sample per visitor. At this point, all barrel picks violate the sample size. 
and a barrel is not a legal package to sample from. So the ABC legislatures to pass that bill to find the barrel picks, but because the current code opens the door for an outside state to challenge the legality of the private barrel process. So Senate Bill 160 calls for the following, and that is the authorization of a manufacturer to ship samples to persons or entities engaged in private selection events. It allows a distiller to conduct private selections and sell private packages at retail and exempt most private selection package sales from wholesale tax. It will also exclude a distiller selling private selection packages from interlocking interest prohibition. I'm not too sure what that means, but Hmm. there is also, there's, should I say, there's also another piece of legislature that's right on the heels of this. And this is coming from Kentucky House Representative Chad McCoy, and he introduced House Bill 500. And this is to also not only just say private barrel selections, but also create new revenue streams for distillers. So House Bill 500 is a deeper dive into the matter and adds a consumer convenience of purchasing a barrel. So instead of purchasing from a retailer, consumers can buy the barrel directly from the distiller. And not every distillery has distribution in all states. So this could eliminate waiting for club picks that can sometimes take up to six months. Or as some distilleries we know, that can take a little bit over a year. It creates the next wave of bourbon tourism satellite tasting rooms and distillery-only releases. So here's what House Bill 500 calls for. It establishes a limited non-quota package license that allows designated alcohol drink beverage licenses to sell vintage distilled spirits and private selection packages. It also authorizes the manufacturer to ship samples, requires a direct shipper license. It sets a $300 annual fee for this non-quota package license for an off-premise retail to sell to a outlet license. It also allows a distiller to conduct private selection events and sell private selection packages at retail. Set package and sample limits at fairs, festivals, and other types of events. It also excludes private selection package sales from a normal quota retail package license. It also excludes a distiller from selling private selection packages or supplying barrels for barrel aged and batch cocktails from interlocking interest prohibition. Again, I don't know what they mean by prohibition, but those are the two bills that have come about. And this is something that I had. If, as soon as Fred messaged me this, and I we had actually talked about it a little bit earlier today, I said, this is the same exact thing as the law in Owensboro. It, it's in the books. You can go and look. It says, a woman cannot buy a hat in Owensboro without her husband's permission. It's just one of the silly laws. Silly laws exist everywhere. So the idea that any of this would be enforced is probably very, very rare. So I when Fred sent it to me this, I said, well, quit putting a spotlight on it, even though we're putting a spotlight on it now, but it's already out there. So we might <laughs> as well first. freaking talk about it. Yeah, he did it first. We might as well freaking talk about it. Uh, I just, one of those things, it's like, nothing's going to be enforced. I don't really think anything would ever come of this. Nobody's going to say, oh, we need to stop private barrel picks because it's like, it's been done like this forever. Why would you automatically think you need to change something? Yeah. And they already, you know, you can buy cocktails and drinks at the distilleries and buy packages and goods from the gift shops. And so it's like, okay, you're going to say this is not allowed, but all you have to do is say, just, you know, pile a $10 fee per person into the barrel pick and, you know, to appease the law or whatever. It's just stupid nonsense. And I don't even know why it's been brought to light, but whatever, just redo it. And so we can move on. (laughs) I agree. It's, it's a, it's a little, I mean, all this is just picking and poking and thinking that it's going to stymie stuff. Fred had mentioned something that, oh, I think this is coming down from potentially the governor and he's making this a priority. And it's just like, I don't know. I mean, if you think about it, Bourbon raised a lot of money for Western Kentucky and the tornado relief. I don't think this is going to be pretty high up on his agenda. And he was there for it. He accepted the check and it was part of the process. Yeah. I don't know. And I, that uh, economic impact report and how many millions yes. of tax dollars <laughs> yeah. bourbon's uh pat in our broke state already so i doubt they want to bite the hand that feeds them i i agree too this is just looking like one more thing of like i don't know staying in the news to stay in the news like i don't know i think it's just or ridiculous. it's some politician just saying look at me i saved barrel picks <laughs> 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 like i found some yeah i mean that's the same thing as if we were to go find some law it and, was and the one in this. Owensboro. I mean, it, w- it really was. If we were to go find some law in Owens, the one in Owensboro, and us to go and advocate for it and go against it and say, like, we got to go and fight this and be like, okay, now because of us, women can buy hats. It's the same thing. Like, it's it's all bull at the end of the day. I, I don't even know why this is something. I'm actually mad we're talking about it, to be honest with you. All right. Well, then let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> but it it's probably more complicated than we're making it. But uh, 
it does seem silly regardless it's like okay let's uh just amend the bill and say you can do barrel picks and move yeah. on but to call it an emergency get out of here <laughs> emergency status i know yeah i think they yeah, were doing a barrel pick and they're like we're on emergency status hurry up you <laughs> get canceled <laughs> you gotta quickly drink this before we we measure your ounce and three quarters like get out of here it's real yeah. i'm i'm just furious even thinking about it all right let's keep going so later this month you'll be able to tour one of louisville's most notorious museums plus a stop for a unique bourbon experience so Hillerick and Bradsby, who's the company who operates the Louisville Slugger Museum, is opening a distillery table experience. Oh, I should have said they open and operate Louisville Slugger, but they are opening a distillery table experience right next door to Slugger Museum in downtown Louisville. And it's called Barrels and Billets. And so this name pays homage to J. Frederick Hillerick or Hill Eric. Yeah, Hillerick. I think that's probably right. Hillerick. 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 Who made a living in woodworking and also made bourbon barrels. His son, Bud, followed in the woodworking business, but instead of crafting baseball bats from cylindrical pieces of... Uh, sorry, but instead he crafted baseball bats from cylindrical pieces of wood called billets. So visitors will be able to pr- participate in a 45-minute bourbon experience that involves blending six different finished bourbons to create a personalized flavor. And at the end, visitors can opt to have that exact flavor bottled in a bond to take... Or bottled... I don't want to say bottled in bond, but maybe just bottled in a bottle to take home. The other experiences at Barrels and Billets include a bourbon cocktail flight, as well as a survey that creates a personalized bourbon for visitors' palates just after 13 simple questions. The grand opening for Barrels and Billets will be on February 23rd. So we got another CY... OB or what, what was the CYPB? C- the CYPB, C-Y, yeah. yeah. But you get to, but you, get to stir the, style. you can stir it with those mini baseball bats you get after your after your yeah. museum visit. Yeah, I'm curious if yeah, if they have like little airplane bottles of mini bats, you know, that <laughs> y- y- you can fill your uh, pick with. But uh no, that's cool. Uh Level Slugger is pretty popular. I'm always when I'm driving down there, I'm amazed at how many people are moving in and out of there. So this makes sense and there's a lot of you know, Michter's is right there. Uh, 21C Evan Williams is not too far, so it makes sense to... And the Frazier, you know, tie, tie it all in right there on Whiskey Row. To be honest, for me, it might actually get me going back to the Slugger Museum. Yeah, it's, everybody's like, you've been to the Bat Museum? Louisville? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in third that, grade, it's a field trip. It's not exa- that I don't... It's just right in my backyard. Exactly. It's it's one of those things that it's, if in your backyard, you never really think about going to it. It's the same thing about any museum. I'm sure wherever you live, if you live in Denver and you want to... You probably don't yeah. go to the huge natural hist- history museum that's there. You probably just don't think about going to it because it's there. But yeah, the last time I went to the... Slugger Museum was had to have been when I was in grade school because that was just part of a field trip. But this will get me going back. I'll go drink some bourbon and watch some. I do remember this. This is this is one vivid memory that stuck out in my head was that you get to go by and you, you're watching all the bats get made. And they had one stack as they were being made. And they were like, you can't touch these bats. These bats are for Ken Griffey Jr. If you literally touch the bat, we have to throw it away he'll smell it <laughs> That's, i remember that it, it's still stuck in my head i always loved the mini helmets i'd get those and so it'd be cool to get an old-fashioned or something one of those <laughs> in <a> mini, mini <laughs> helmet <laughs> in a mini helmet so there's your there's your marketing idea smart idea maybe we should hold on to that one yeah yeah we'll we'll, we'll sponsor a game and have pursuit united helmets going, going around for people <laughs> sign me up yeah All right, that's going to be end of the news, but we'll be back with some bourbon release news right after this. If you're anything like me, then you can't get enough about bourbon. And that's why I'm a subscriber to Bourbon Plus magazine. Bourbon Plus is a quarterly publication that tells the stories from the heart of bourbon, the farmers who grow the grain, the distillers who labor over the process, and the people like you and me who raise their glasses to celebrate it all. Subscribe to Bourbon Plus Magazine today at bourbonplus.com, that's P-L-U-S dot com, and use code PURSUIT at checkout for $5 off your subscription. Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point-of-sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. Shopify's point-of-sale is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. And with Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner, 
that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers in line and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. And get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's point of sale Go Mobile device for a battle tested solution. Plus, Shopify's award winning 24 7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash bourbon, all lowercase, and go to shopify.com slash bourbon to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash bourbon. Welcome back, everybody. Here's some bourbon release news, and actually, this is going to be a, a pretty short one. I say, I'll say the, the first piece of bourbon release news is we did find out that there was a, an undiscovered 70 cases of Pursuit United at Sealbox. So if you have not gotten your bottle yet, there is still time. We, I, I promise a, we, we thought they were sold out. I sent a message to Blake because the inventory said seven. Like there were seven bottles left. And I said, Blake, is this right? I'm going to put something out there that said this is your last chance to buy it. He goes, yeah, we just did inventory. Like that's that's got to be it. So, of course, what I do is I put it out there. 24 hours later, <laughs> 420 bottles are now in inventory. I'm like, God, dang, dang it, Blake. You make me look like an idiot here. We're like solo stove. Flash sale ends today. And then it only starts the next day. It always starts the next day. It's like <laughs> yeah. always available. And you're like, ah, an extra 10% off tomorrow. I just wanna, wish I would have waited. Yep. But yes. So make sure you go. and More United. Bottle United. That's all. That's got to be one of the only places you can get it. The bourbon yeah. at least. Pretty much everywhere else that I've seen is sold out around the country. So definitely don't sleep on it. We're, we're here for you. We make the bourbon for you. I, I promise. We don't, we don't get all these awards from all these places and just pay them. Well, actually, we do pay for awards, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we pay the entry. Not we the pay plan. the entry. Pay the entry. But we're very, very excited to get the awards back from it. But let's keep talking. We actually only have one piece of bourbon release news. And that is Portland's East Side Distilling will release its first ever maraschino cherry whiskey. And it's crafted using their East Side's rare whiskey blend and Italy's premier Luxardo maraschino liqueur. So the famed Luxardo Ooh. cherry. Oh, I know, I know. Everybody, everybody loves their Luxardos. And there's actually some, some interesting tidbits in here about Luxardo maybe people don't know about. So the famed Luxardo cherry liqueur is the original maraschino made from sour marisca marisca. Yeah, Mariska, M-A-R-A-S-C-A, Mariska. So it's made from sour Mariska cherries since 1821 by the Luxardo family. It's distilled using the fruit skins, pits, leaves, and stems, giving it a distinct nutty flavor. And Luxardo's Mariska cherries are the gold standard that are harvested at peak season during the summer, resulting in an aromatic, sweet tart, and real fruit tasting liqueur that is unrivaled. So Eastside's new cherry whiskey was made exclusively with permission from Luxardo. It's bottled at 30% ABV. It excels as a cocktail base or as an addition to any drink. It will be available for purchase at liquor stores in Oregon for $39.95 and online at eastsidedistilling.com with nationwide shipping while supplies last. That's I love that. I love Luxardo's. I want to try it. I mean, if it works well in a Manhattan, you think you just add a little, just a little drop of liqueur in there, maybe something like that, swap something out. There's somebody that's a, a good cocktail person that could probably figure this one out. It works good in everything. It makes everything taste good. <laughs> that, ju- <laughs> that, that Luxardo juju. It really so, is. I'm sure, I mean, uh, I'm sure this will be good. Put a spoon in there. I'll spoon those cherries out. Heck yeah. I know. But well, that's, that's going to be man. it. That's crazy. I know that was there was not a whole lot that's happening for this week in bourbon. That's okay because we'll be back again next week with, of course, more bourbon news. But until then, cheers, everybody, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>